Good afternoon, everybody. MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video is an MLB sports betting preview for Friday, July the 8th, 2022. Super pumped to bring you this video. We're going to go through every single game. We're going to give you some leans, some potential plays that I like for tonight. Uh, show you how I'm handicapping baseball. As always, if this is your first time watching my, one of my videos, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Uh, have a ton of content on my channel related to sports handicapping, sports betting. So you get a lot of value simply by subscribing to the channel, watching the videos. You will improve your sports handicapping if you watch the videos on this channel. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm MG Covers, Covers spelled with a Z. Give out a ton of content on Instagram as well. Uh, a lot of things I put on my storyline I don't post a video about. And then that is also the same screen name for uh, Twitter as well. All right, so we're going to dive into the preview. Before we do that, we're having a really solid, um, really solid last couple months since we started. We dive back into soccer, a lot of success with soccer, and then of course since we've changed the MLB model, we've gone 24 and 19, which is 55 percent. So having a lot of success there. Um, you can see here, this is from my sports monitoring service the last uh, week, 30% uh, ROI. What reason ROI is important? That means the amount that you're investing versus what you're getting back. So a 30% return the last week, a 33% return in the last two weeks, and second best handicapper in the last month, a 23% return uh, last 60 days a 19% return, and in the last uh, three months, more difficult to have a high return, 11% ROI, which is the number one um, at my sports monitoring service. So super excited to share with you a lot of success and things that I'm doing with Major League Baseball. And so let's start off taking a look at all of the games. Now what you see over here on the left, these are my lines. And if you follow me for any length of time, the first model I came out with for the beginning of the year – um, just didn't cut it. So I changed the model and I absolutely love this model. We've had a ton of success with it. Um, clients really, uh, having a lot of success with the model and it basically accounts for everything. And I think that's the way to handicap baseball. You have to factor in starting pitching, relief pitching, hitting form. You have to look at line movement, um, basically factor everything never re overreact to one thing so that's generally the macro way to approach it so let's look at these numbers here uh first off we have tampa minus 180 the sportsbook line minus 184 cincinnati is plus 154 my line is similar um not as big minus 135 for tampa that is a play we would look at on the run line and very important here, if this is your first time uh, considering MLB, we only play home team away teams on the run line. Reason being, they're guaranteed nine at bats. We want every statistical advantage we can in sports betting. If you play the home team, they're not guaranteed nine at bats. So statistically speaking, the away team will cash on the run line more times than the sense than the home team will. Uh, scrolling on down, we have very similar line to the sports books here with Baltimore. Baltimore is minus 142. We have them as minus 147. This will be an example of the favorites concept. The favorites concept is very simple. It means if my my line has the team as a favorite, the sports book line has that has that team as a favorite. There is a strong probability that team will win the game. Why? Because favorites in MLB win about. 50, 60% of the time, and there's your proof. Uh, favorites so far in Major League Baseball are 732 and 501 for a 59% win percentage. So that's a, a good approach to handicap. And again, when you do it that way, there's not a lot of value, but strong possibility that they will win. All right, moving along, uh, Miami minus 127, minus 135. Basically, what we call a 50-50 game. Both teams are favored. So, you flip a coin. Either team could win this game based on the power ranking. So, we favor Miami here at plus 140. Yankees squeezed by last night. Favorites again tonight, minus 162. We have them as minus 130. That would be a potential play on the run line. 
uh, Washington, Atlanta, really no value here. Uh, we have Atlanta minus 130. Books have them at minus 255. And just a quick education. A lot of times people say, oh, Atlanta's a heavy favorite, minus 255. Actually, the reason, the real reason the book set the line at, at, at this high number is to attract money on the opposite side. They could set the line for the Braves at minus 150, minus whatever. They're going to get action on Atlanta. So the reason why this line is the way it is in these type of situations, really good team versus a really bad team, is to attract money on the dog side to balance that action out. So that's why you have that huge um, difference there and the reason Washington's plus 210 to get more money on the Washington side. Minnesota, Texas, uh, this is a favorites concept. Minnesota minus 120. My line is Minnesota minus 125. Detroit plus 140, um, nice win with Detroit last night. There they cashed as favorites via my line. I think they were plus, what, plus 200 last night. We have them as a favorite again tonight. Books have them at plus 140. Pittsburgh and Milwaukee, both teams are dogs via my line. Sports books have Milwaukee as the favorite. So this is a what we call a 50-50 game. Flip a coin, either side can win. So that favors Pittsburgh at plus 188. Cleveland, Kansas City, both teams struggling right now. Not a lot of value. This is actually a really good line by the books. Books have this line, Cleveland plus 106 and Kansas City minus 124. Um, so neither team really, there's no motive or reason to play either side because both these teams are what we consider underdogs via my line. No reason to even consider either side there. Philadelphia and St. Louis. We have Philadelphia as a favorite. Line's almost identical to my line. So this is definitely a favorites concept. One you might could play straight up as a side and not even have to play the, the run line because that juice is relatively low, minus 126. And the reason being, favorites win 60% of the time in Major League Baseball if you convert 60% into a money line, that is minus 150. So we're getting minus 126, so a little bit of value there. Colorado, Arizona, 50-50 game. So we favor, I mean, Colorado, Arizona, we favor Colorado there at plus 144. Astros minus 186 against, Astros probably arguably one of the best teams in Major League Baseball right now, if not the best team. Oakland plus 156. So our line is Houston minus 143. So we would definitely consider Houston on the run line there. And let's just take a peek at what the run line is right now. Yeah, really good numbers there. Minus 110. Uh, moving along, San Francisco, San Diego, both teams sort of duds right now. But this is a 50-50 game, so that would favor San Fran. San Fran only won two out of their last ten. San Diego only won three out of their last seven. Toronto, Seattle. Toronto really struggling right now. Seattle, a, a really impressive baseball team right now, won eight out of the last ten. We were on Seattle last night. Actually got it at plus 110 before the line moved. So this is a classic example of a bias situation where the public sort of perceives Toronto to be as good or if not better than Seattle. But reality, Seattle is definitely the better team here. And we have them favored via my line at minus 138. And then finally, the Cubs, Dodgers. Uh, we have Dodgers at favorite, minus 141. So not a lot we can do with this line right here. So what I do when I look at these games, um, so I take all the games with value and all the games that are favorites, uh, also favorites at the books, favorites via my line. And then I create what's called an MLB first cut. So essentially, that's what it is, games with value, and it helps me consolidate my handicapping. So now I'll basically handicap all of these games. We're not going to handicap all these games in the video, but we will look at a few of these uh, to give you an idea of how I handicap these, handicap the game. So let's kind of take a look at Miami here at plus 136. We were actually on Miami last night. They laid a big old egg against the Mets, but still a good team. So the first thing most important is we're going to look at these pitching matchups always. You can see Miami's in good form. They've won sixth out of the last 10 games. 
Mets five out of the last five. So Miami lost their last two, um, but won five previous games. And you have Mets here has won four of their last five. So Mets definitely improving in good form. So we take a look at the um, starting pitching matchups. You'll see Lopez for the – I just drew a blank. Lopez for uh, the Mets – I mean Miami. And what you want to look at for pitching and baseball is the last three starts. How a pitcher has performed year to date is basically irrelevant. So what you want to focus on is most recent form. And it's interesting you have two pitchers here in really, really good form. You have Lopez. um, His ERA is 3.44 in his last three. You have uh, Chris Bassett, 2.53 with a whip of .80 and 1.09. So I would, the way I handicap this is you're looking for an edge. And I would say a slight edge for the Mets, but not much at all. Um, once you get down to that type of ERA, it's pretty good. Maybe obviously a little bit of edge met starter there as opposed to Miami, but not by much. And we take a look at the bullpens here. Um, this is Miami's bullpen here. Pretty good. Um, ERA 3.73 for available bullpen. The last three, they've really gotten beat up here pretty bad, 4.91. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they got absolutely slayed last night. You look at um, Mets here, 4.78 ERA in the last three, whereas available bullpen is 3.93. So when I look at this matchup here, I look at this pretty even. Um, Starting pitcher as well as uh, bullpens, fairly even. Again, a slight edge to the Mets, but you also have to factor everything. We're getting plus 140 for a game that looks close to even, which is about the way that I handicapped it last night. Um, let's take a look, go back in this, and we'll take a look at early line movement. Whoops, I think that's up back on that other page here. And this isn't the source that I use for line movement. There's a lot of resources. Um <clears throat> But if you're a client, you you will find out. I got several uh, sites and resources that I share on which book or websites to look for line movement. But this point span is pretty good. We can take a look at the overall line movement here. And I just clicked on the wrong thing, didn't I? My bad, guys. Mets. Here we go. Line movement. Now, again, the most important line movement is going to be your late line movement. Uh, when I say late, within the the last hour, even up to the last 15 minutes before the game, you have a lot of more times than night. You have a lot of sharp movement. So we want to see which direction the line moves. You can see here, not really a lot going on here. Friday, it opened at plus 140, went down to plus 135, now back up to 140. So I would consider this relatively neutral line movement. So definitely a strong lean on um, Miami there. Uh, so that's really how I handicap it. Um, not too complicated. And then the challenge, of course, is to look for, I would, I know how, so I handicap the Miami game, right? So then when I handicap the next game, the way I do that, and we'll do that now, is the game that I'm looking at a, quote, better wager than the game I just handicap, And that's how I'm able to narrow it down. So I haven't said this, but what I'm doing every day is I'm, I'm narrowing it down to just two plays. The reason I do that is to take out the variance. Baseball is an extremely, extremely difficult sport to handicap. So, you know, and if you've a lot of models, like my college football model, it would almost be advantageous to play every game with value. The model's that good. You simply cannot do that in Major League Baseball because there's so much variance. So you could potentially lose every single one of these plays. So what I've found and what I'm having success with is taking all of these plays and narrowing it down to two. So that's what I do. That's how I handicap. So let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at this Minnesota game because it's a different type. 
So the favorite concept, again, if the team's a favorite via my line, they're a favorite via the books. We know favorites win 60% of the time in Major League Baseball. Pretty good chance they're going to win the game. But we still handicap it. We never make a play just based on one concept. And one little trick, too. Well, I'm not going to say that. I was going to give you a little uh, coaching client uh, tidbit there, but I'll, I'll hold it off on that. Um, I, the last coaching video I made – uh, was a really, really good video, but it was related to totals, how you can use totals to handicap sides. Um, but let's take a look at pitchers here. Gray versus gray here. Okay, so Sonny Gray, uh, 3.38 ERA, 1.31 whip in his last three starts. John Gray, 1.04 whip and a 2.95 ERA. So maybe a slight edge to Texas, but not much. And one thing I will do too um, is if you look down here, this is a, I'll give you this tidbit. This is a really good nugget. When you look at his Sonny Gray, look at his last three right here. You look at overall his last three and also look at away. And when you look at his last three, is 3.38, okay? That's his current form. And when I look at overall ERA, a good way to look at this would be his potential, right? A lot of this is almost related to handicaps in golf, right? You have how you're currently playing, and your handicap is your potential, what you have potential to play. So he's actually out of form just a little bit, but potentially has can pitch really well. So that's how I assess it. And I do the same with Gray. Actually, he's just the opposite. He's at a 2.95 ERA. So he's in he's in exceptionally good form for his overall record of 3.96 ERA. But the most important thing is the current. So I would would give a slight edge to Texas, but not by much, right? Um, because you can look at Gray. I mean, that's not that's not terrible, right? And for an American League pitcher, that's actually pretty good. So let's take a look at their bullpens. Uh, 3.04 in their last three. Available bullpen is 3.24. Let's take a look at Texas. About the same. 3.11. Available bullpen is 3.07. So when you look at this, and let's take a look at line movement as well. This is very similar to the other game. And, you know, both these, what we're looking at is everything looks relatively even, right? You look at four, Minnesota's won five of their last ten. Texas, three out of their last seven. And more specifically, you have Minnesota's won three out of their last five. Texas, really struggling. Only won one of their last five, three out of their last ten. And let's take a look and see what line movement's doing initially. Again, line movement this early is 2.23 in this Eastern Standard Time. This game goes off at 8 o'clock at night. And you can already see uh, 7.5 with the total. They're anticipating a low-scoring game. So they're projecting that both these pitchers are going to pitch well. What are we looking at? Line movement. Let's take a look at early line movement here. Um, and the line has moved in favor of Minnesota, right? Minus 115 to minus 125. Um, so that early line movement favors uh, Minnesota there. Yeah, I actually like this play so far. I think that's a strong play. So when the way that I would handicap that, probably, you know, what do we have going for us? We have their favorite via my line. Favorite at the books. We have early line movement. And again, I would wait to place this wager um, to make sure because that line could move against us. And the only risk we'd run of waiting late is, right, the line could really move fast. Maybe it moves up to minus 135. Um, but I wouldn't be scared to lay that if that's what happened to the line simply because I know this team probably has – in essence, a 60% chance of winning, and that still would give us value compared to, say, minus 135. So that's basically how I'm handicapping it, y'all. Nothing too complex, but again, you can see how I factor everything. Uh, there are a few other tips that I um, 
only share with clients. Um, one of them is related to hitting. Another one's related to the totals line. If you want to become a client, uh, you get access to all of my lines every single day for all sports. That's Major League Baseball and soccer right now. We have college football coming up just around the corner in a couple months. That's probably my best model, college football and NFL. $49.95 per month, and you get access to all of my coaching videos. If you want access to everything I just mentioned, in addition to all my plays, that's $99 per month. And the best value is joining for $4.99. If you pay that in full each month, that end up being about $1,200 for the year. So you save about $600 by prepaying that all in a year. And if you want to join, there's a link to join in the description box. So just click, click on that link. And remember when you're wagering on Major League Baseball, factor everything, never overreact to one thing. You might see a pitching change, and then the public might overreact to that. You don't want to just pile on. Just take that into consideration. Factor everything. Make smart wedgers. Uh, narrow it down to your two blessed plays, and I think you'll be much better off than playing a lot of volume in Major League Baseball. Hope that helps. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.